How's it going everyone? It's Than from Tidal Gardens bringing you part 3 of the Nano Reef video series. In this video, we're going to finally get to fill up the tank and try out some stocking ideas. If you missed part 1, you can click on the annotation to see what the tank looked like before we started. It was an old used acrylic aquarium so it needed to be refurbished. If you missed part 2, you can click on this annotation to see the equipment that's on the system and also some ideas regarding aquascaping. Okay, now that the tank is all filled, we can get to stocking it. One of the issues nanoreefs face is a result of their size. The very thing that makes them an attractive option for tight spaces comes with it the disadvantage of instability compared to larger aquariums. Temperature or chemical changes can happen quickly, so some fish and corals may not be well suited for a tank like this. So what are some good choices? The first tank we're going to try is one that's more or less bulletproof. The corals are either soft corals or mushrooms, and they're both great for beginners or small aquariums that are prone to a little bit of fluctuation. In addition to being hardy, most of these soft corals provide a bit of motion to the nano. I've chosen a variety of finger leathers such as Simularia, Nephthia, and Kenya trees to fill vertical space. They're generally fast growing, so this quantity in about six months will really fill out this tank. The nice thing about soft corals is they have a weak stinging ability compared to stony corals. They can be in close proximity to one another without too much stress. All corals do some combat with one another, but soft corals are less likely to kill each other off. One of our tanks at the greenhouse is a collection of random leather corals, polyps, mushrooms, and soft corals such as Xenia that were thrown on top of each other. Over time, it actually turned into a dense but visually appealing landscape. We may have lost some corals here and there, because after all they were just piled in there, but the vast majority thrived. After seeing Jim's rose bubble tip anemone tank, it's very tempting to try and recreate it. After all, the interaction between a clownfish and an anemone is what brought a lot of people in this hobby to begin with. The problem is, anemones are on the more challenging end of the spectrum. Bubble tips, less so, but there are many varieties such as sea bays or ritteri that are extremely challenging in the best aquariums and practically impossible in a nano. The second big issue with an enemy tank is the fact that they like to move around a lot. Bubble tips, for example, are prime offenders when it comes to moving. They can basically run laps around this tank, and the problem is they can get caught in a pump or clog your overflow and cause a flood. Now if I were to set up a tank like this for myself, I would try as much as possible to avoid power heads in the display and use a sponge on the overflow section to prevent one of these guys from blocking it. The problem of course is that a sponge has to be regularly cleaned so it doesn't clog all on its own, but at least it prevents a sudden flood. As I mentioned before, anemones tend to be very sensitive compared to soft corals, and I would pay special attention to water quality and keep up with frequent water changes. If you do this right, these bubble tips will multiply and create a sea of tentacles. Small polyp stony corals, or SPS, are a very popular biotope in the hobby. If you spend much time on online forums, you probably notice that the majority of feature tanks are dominated with SPS corals. SPS are considered challenging because they're very sensitive, and any sudden change in water or light can kill off a large colony. They also happen to be highly aggressive towards one another, and what can happen is two corals grow and eventually touch one another, and that causes a die-off of both colonies. Lastly, a number of SPS corals, such as Acropora and Montipora, benefit from extremely strong lighting that would cook a small volume of water. So, as a rundown, highly sensitive corals that don't like to get close to one another. It's probably not the best idea to put them in a relatively unstable, crammed space, right? Long story short, probably not. But there are varieties of SPS that buck the trend and are both hardy and grow well under subdued lighting conditions. Some of these corals can be seen here. I've chosen Seriatopora or bird's nest corals because they have that branching stony coral look very similar to Acropora. We happen to have four different types, so that gives some variety to the tank. Pasilopora is another coral that gives you that branching look. 
I've also selected a plating chalice coral as the main centerpiece because it resembles a plating montipora. The big difference though is that this coral thrives in low light, while a plating montipora tends to color up best under very intense lighting. Although I don't have any shown here, Samacora, Pavona, and Hydnophora are all types of SPS that would also work in a tank like this. These corals are far hardier than typical SPS, but it's all relative. This is far from a bulletproof system, and you'd have to keep a close eye on water quality. Okay, last system here. This is an arrangement of large polyp stony corals, or LPS. While they're not quite as hardy as an all-soft coral system, they tend to be a little less maintenance than an SPS tank. Right now is probably the golden age of LPS corals because of the varieties coming in from Australia. Never before have Aquarius had access to large polyp stony corals with the amazing coloration available today. When I first started out in the hobby, there were basically two colors of corals, brown and green, and you paid top dollar for green. These days, there are rainbow colored corals available. For this LPS tank, I've gone with an assortment of euphilia corals, such as hammers, torches, and frog spawn. I've also included some of the more interesting brain-like corals, such as acanthophilia and cyanarina. On the left side there, you can see an elegance, which is one of my longtime favorites. When it comes to LPS, there's a lot of options, many of which don't appear here, like Acanthastria or Blastomusa. In fact, there's plenty of tanks out there that have all Acanthastria, and they look absolutely amazing because of the varieties of color and pattern that are available. Okay, just for fun, which type of tank would you put together with this Nano? Would you go with option A, the soft coral system? B, the SPS tank? C, the LPS system? or D, the anemone tank? Or would you go in a completely different direction? Post it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and take a look at our Facebook page if you're into that. Take care and happy reefing.